Hey, welcome back to Content Marketing World Chatter. I'm here today with uh, Tim Schmoyer. Hey guys. How are you, Tim? Good, how are you? Tim, I want to first ask you, well, he's with Video Creators, it's his show, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but first I want to ask you, at what age did people stop calling you Timmy? Uh, the only people that really called me Timmy growing up were my grandmother and my high school wrestling coach. <laughs> so, other than and that, that everyone's called me today. Tim. Bring them on out. <laughs> we got a surprise for you, Tim. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go three rounds, okay? Okay. Uh, those were the only two? Your parents didn't call you Timmy? Not really. I think I had a Timmy the Turtle like costume shell that they put on me like for Halloween one year. Mm -hmm. My dad made out of paper mache, but that was like a little joke. Other than that, it's always been Tim. Would you be willing to wear that costume for the duration uh, I, of this interview if I, we can I'd get it? I'd try it. Yeah, I, guess okay. it's, I think the strings might be a little short, but yeah, I can. We'll skip that then. Uh, listen, we. Um, I remember I was in seventh grade and my mom I was at church and my mom called me Timmy and there was a girl I had a crush on ah, sitting there and she it. looks at me <laughs> and she says Timmy and I was like that's it and I shut it all down uh, you know they still don't listen but it happens sometimes <laughs> hey so tell me about uh, video creators tell me about your, your gig here yeah yeah video creators um, started out in 2006 I uploaded my very first video to YouTube so that was like what, 14 years ago now? 13 years okay. ago, something like that. March 2nd, 2006. And I was just trying to introduce my girlfriend at the time to my family across the country. I was in graduate school in Dallas. My family lived back, back in, in Philadelphia. And I was like, this could be a good way to like introduce her to them. And so we made little videos that now would be known as vlogs. But back then, that was just called being awkward in public with a camera. Right? And so um, back then, it was MySpace days. You don't use your real name on the internet, right? And so other people started watching these videos we were publishing I was getting a little nervous trying to figure out what was going on who are these people why like how are they finding me why do they keep coming back and 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 a lot of other people trying to figure that out too and so before long I was trying to like figure out this YouTube platform and then other brands and creators were like hey Tim Schmoyer's trying to figure it out they're coming to me and I'm like I don't really know that much I promised and within pretty a few short years actually 2013 I officially launched my own business called Video Creators, where we help people just learn how to grow their YouTube audience, and we do strategy for them really? in terms of like, how do you grow a channel? How do you get people really? to discover you? And how do you grow that community? And so, so far, my team and I are responsible for helping our clients generate over 14 billion views and 61 million subscribers on YouTube. We've done strategy for Disney, Warner Brothers, HBO, Century 21, eBay, like all these big brands all the way down to like creators and brands and brands and companies, small businesses are just starting out on YouTube. They're like, how the heck do we even get started? So really wide gamut, had a lot of success, a lot of fun doing it. So listen, uh, what what's the one tip you would give to a brand like that without even looking at their channel? Yeah. That you just the mistake that you see so often, you would say, hey, go let's go check this out. Try, you know, make sure you're not doing this. Yeah, the the, the very first, and this is just like marketing, branding, like one-on-one stuff, but sometimes people forget this stuff when they bring it into like a YouTube um, audience is that they just like think that, hey, if we just talk about ourselves, yeah. then everyone's gonna love that for right. some reason, right? And so like, uh, for example, when we are working with like a debt consolidation software, for example, Right, and they're just like doing video tutorials about how to use their software and things. And I'm like, the only time people want to come watch that is if they've already purchased from you and they're frustrated with your software. Yeah. Right? So we just <laughs> said like, let's make this about discovering freedom, financial freedom. Like, let's make the brand, revol the channel revolve around okay. that message instead. And so it's usually about like, what's what reward or benefit does the viewer actually want? Not like, let's just talk about ourselves and hope people watch. So will you, you'll help a brand like that, help tell that story, figure out what that looks like visually and write a script, I guess, and then go shoot the whole the whole thing, right? Yeah, we have a process that my team and I go through with the brand before we can even get into YouTube. Like the thing that makes YouTube work is that it's content that people actually want to watch. Right. And if people are gonna watch it, they're consuming it for selfish reasons, right, and benefits. So we need to figure out what do they, what's the reward the hero actually wants and then figure out how we can be the guy as the brand. Yeah, marketing, Marketing doesn't always get that sometimes, you know? It's yeah. so funny. The mar the marketing world's been around for uh, how many years? When was it invented? I don't know. Yeah. 13 AD, when they first marketed the wheel, I think. And they still don't get that you gotta make it engaging. Yeah, know? people just assume that if other people know about my brand or my product, then they're gonna wanna buy it. But that you actually have to get people to care about your brand right. or your product right. in order and to buy it. And there's a lot of things that go into that, but basically it's like, 
just because people know you exist doesn't mean they're going to buy or turn to customers. You've yeah. got to get them to care. And so we have to start by forming a brand that people actually care about first before we can even start a YouTube channel that has any sort of success. Is, is trying to find a surprise a big part of the work you do? Like trying to find some, uh, you know, something revelational that maybe a viewer hasn't expe or didn't expect from a brand? Or do you just no, kind of... No, we don't usually go down the surprise shock route. We just kind of, we really want to, like, what are you all about? And why should someone care? And then we take them through on that process and then it turns out like, oh, you know, the cosmetic company isn't really about makeup. It's about helping women feel confident, right? Or Disney parks isn't actually about the roller coaster. It's about giving families a shared experience together, right? It's, and it becomes like, what's the thing that people actually want? The problem that you're actually solving that maybe even the customer doesn't even know themselves, that's what they actually want or need yet. So that's usually the thing we go down. Then we form a content strategy around promoting that thing. And people are like, man, I want financial freedom or I want to feel more confident or I want my family to build better relationships. And then they go into the funnel after that point. That's funny. I, w I, work, I used to work with IBM and there'd be some cases we'd be working on a launch for 18 months. And it wasn't until like the week before that we started working on the press release hmm. that we would discover, wait, uh, yeah. what about this? This is what yeah. people really want. And yeah. I, I didn't think about Disney, about that being, I haven't been yet with my kids. Well, we've been once, but I haven't really thought about it being this shared experience, yeah. you know? Um, right. But that's, uh, yeah, that does. You discover that, I guess, in this yeah. in this process of putting the script together and thinking about how you're going right. to tell a story. So you want people to consume your YouTube content. Is, you want them to consume it for the same reason they're going to consume your product. Yep. And so if there's a difference in the value proposition between what your product is delivering and the content you're delivering, then it's going to be it's going to be really hard to get those viewers to convert into customers because right. they're actually consuming different things for, for two different reasons, yeah. right? And so we, we come in and we want to just make sure the first, like to answer your question about what's the first thing, like we want to make sure that all that's in alignment so that that customer journey is as smooth and natural as possible to get from one transaction to the next. Okay. Hey, Sarah on our production team told me that you have seven kids. I do, yeah. How often do the, one of those kids end up in, the, in a video? Uh, you, we actually have a whole, them? that's how we got started that channel. We started in 2006. <laughs> You're like, we, what are we going to do with these kids? It's like a side <laughs> project, but it is something that we, you know, maybe once and twice a month now, we'll publish a video there just of, of our family. And, uh, and so they are in that content and now they have their own YouTube channel. They edit their own videos. And really? So yeah, they use iMovie and they're up to like over 500 subscribers after like three months just doing their own thing. So, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I like, I like teach, we homeschool them and so I homeschool them every morning. So I want them to learn entrepreneurial skills. And I think that there's a lot that kids can benefit from doing YouTube videos because one, they really like it. They like watching other creators and then they get to be on the platform and share that experience with them. And they usually travel with me to events, not like this one, but to other YouTube events and get to meet their creators. And so oh, there's a lot of math involved with editing with, with, and there's a lot of like abstract thinking they have to learn, problem solving they have to do like on the set as well as learning what to cut and what to leave in and what to take out and all that. And I think it's a lot of value. So yeah, they have it on the channel, doing good. Wow, okay. So uh, yeah, up next we're gonna talk about uh, that there's math involved in editing and I must be doing it wrong. <laughs> That'll be our next episode. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, that's uh, that's cool that you've gotten them engaged. I'm trying to get, my boy just turned 12. And so he's into all these YouTubers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and totally. Are you in Dallas? Uh, no, I used to live in Dallas, but I live in Cincinnati now. Okay, all right. Yeah, there's some YouTubers. It seems like, so, so for my son, the, the guys he watches, they all have these Lamborghinis. You know, it's oh, all about, yeah get a Lambo yep. on there and talk about that and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's amazing some of the stuff that he watches. He'll sit there and spit, you know, watch it. It's a, it's a long show. I mean, these yeah. guys will go on and on. Yeah. Like, Holy smoke. And it's very real. I, I grew up on PBS Kids when everything was like much more produced and much more like right. professional. Right. right. And then here I'm watching Mike. They don't ever go to television to watch PBS. That's right. they, they go to like that can I watch YouTube. And they go and they watch these creators who are just with their, sometimes their phones. Uh, sometimes they'll have like a little point and shoot, but it's like a camera that's maybe around five, six hundred dollar camera and no special audio or anything, but it's just like really captivating storytelling yeah. that these kids just love Locked and get in. sucked into those stories. And that's really what, if we're going to boil it all down to like what success on YouTube really all about, it's about capturing your audience's attention. 
And that's what these creators are doing really well. They're telling a story about a character who wants something, there's conflict that they're overcoming to get it, and they're transformed by this process uh, by the end, by end of, the, uh, of each video. And so like my kids see that, and because of the nature of what I do, they think, oh, I, anybody can do that. And so that's why they're getting uh, into it and learning storytelling and right. those skills and stuff. Uh, so I think that's part of the allure for them. But when I was a kid, I had no, you know, there was, or, there was no way for us to be on PBS, right? Yeah. It's just something you consume that I think our kids now grow up like, this is something I can be a part of. Like, is your kid making YouTube content? He, he's he's so resistant to that. Oh, I have okay. to, yeah, yeah. My daughter will make a video with me. She'll make videos with me. And, and Matthew's just, he's still kind of reluctant. Yeah. And uh, But now I'm trying to do a lot more visual, uh, 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 interesting you know, uh, nonsense, and that that will get him engaged when he yeah. things like that. Yeah, I just think it's fascinating that like so many of these top tier creators are getting like like a friend of mine is getting like 300 million views a month on his YouTube channel. Uses a whole production crew that is like him, his wife, sometimes another friend, and their camera is like a $600 camera, right? And so it really has very little to do with production value, right. oh, yeah. it yeah. really has yeah. everything to do with how, how well can you hold an audience's right. attention That's and deliver it. value. So the key to like really growing on YouTube is, is not as much about tags and keyword research and search volume and competition and stuff like that. It's more about like how much value can you provide yeah. to a specific audience that really pulls them in. And they actually, I mean Hollywood spends a lot of money trying to get that authentic handshake cam feel or you can just do it yourself for free right? yeah exactly so yeah exactly. That, that's really important hey tim thanks for coming on the show yeah thanks for having me uh video creators we can just look you up on uh yeah. online find yeah. you uh, videocreators.com or youtube.com slash video Wonderful. creators all right tim Schmoyer, thank yeah. you so much go make a video